and welcome to Subject to Interpretation, a podcast which takes us deep into the topics that matter to professional interpreters. I'm Maria Ceballos Wallace, and I am pleased to have with us today Elian Zafir Marcus. Hi, Elian. Hi, Maria. How are you? I am doing great. Thank you so much for joining us. And today it's a special episode because Delamora Institute of Interpretation is launching a very innovative new project. And today we're here to talk about what it is and invite our colleagues, interpreters from all over the United States and all over the world to join us, right? Tell me why we're here. Correct, Maria. So tonight we are going to be talking about our live online Train the Trainer workshop 60 hours training for especially our trainers and who any anybody any interpreter who would like to become a, uh, a a trainer you know what they don't have to be an interpreter oh i didn't know that tell us a little more about that so the best candidate that would get approved right away and will get uh, approved to register for this uh, training are certified interpreters, certified legal or certified medical. However, let's say a manager in a hospital that is a manager of language services or language office in the uh, hospital wants to know more about interpreting, how to train interpreters so that when they are inviting trainers, if they want to train their uh, their uh, staff, their, um, yes, their staff, their interpreters, they can come to us and we can help them into getting the training. And this is a very well-established training that uh, they can give to their, uh, to their staff. However, also any interpreter who would like to become a trainer and does not know how to become a trainer, they can take this class and we will help them really know or harness the, the power of effective communication. So on that note, what essential skills will participants gain from the Train the Trainer workshop? So Maria, we know that interpreters are communicators. It is our, our field is in communication. So what we are going to first tackle in this training is communication. How do we communicate? How do we connect with people? How do we influence people? And how do we influence an audience and give a training or public speaking and being able to capture everyone to listen to us and to influence them because we really want to influence them to abide by the code of ethics, follow the protocol and the standards of the of the profession that's the whole that's that's the gist of it is really we want to influence them to do the correct thing that is going to protect our profession it is we would love to share with them this and we are sharing this with them but if we think about it it is really because Augustine and I and Augustine and the De La Mora Institute, we're really very jealous for this profession. And we want that anybody who is training for to interpreters and beginner interpreters know what they are doing. We really want them, we really want the trainers to know what they are doing and why when we are giving them this license and this training, why are we giving them ahead of time a training only for how to communicate, what's adult learning, how to teach, and how to put an activity together, how to put a PowerPoint together. All this, they will learn it. It's not an easy program, and we don't want it to be easy. Easy come, easy go. We don't want it to be easy. We want those who are really very serious in opening their career in training to come to us because these are the people who are going to invest the money and the effort and the hard work into putting a good training that uh, Augustine have worked for for 25 years. One of the things that distinguishes the De La Mora Institute of Interpretation and in fact the brand for Agustin De La Mora's teaching style is that he really relies on pedagogy and he relies on 
information, scientific information on how to work with adult learners. Is this program going to convey that same philosophy and then going to share the best methods for interpreters to teach other interpreters? Exactly. I couldn't have said it in a better way, uh, Maria. It is going to be, uh, so Augustine has around 25 years of experience. I have around 15 years of experience uh, the, the trainers that are going to come or the candidates that are going to come, they're going to get, let's do the math between 25 and 15, around 40 years of experience that is put together to give that uh, training. This training is not, there is, I can't uh, really sell it because I'm not a salesperson, but I can tell you that it took me a long time to know what the training is and how I want to become a trainer. And I always observed uh, Augustine because as you know, Augustine is my mentor. So I observed him. And when I go with him and when we give the training, I really absorb him and how he is giving, how he's capturing the, the audience. So between that, between also all the uh, research that I've done about adult learning, where also Augustine was guiding me, look at this research to study that, we've put together a training that is very, um, looks like uh, Augustine. However, every interpreter is going to be um, his own person training. We don't want to create a uh, small Augustine de la Mora, we want to empower the trainers to find their trainer's voice, if you want, to find their trainer's persona and how are they going to really influence their students when they are teaching them the know-how of legal interpreting and medical interpreting. I'm so glad to hear that, Elian. It's important for the candidates to be empowered, to find their own voice, and to be able to transmit the material that has proven to be, um, you know, the core of Agustin de la Mora's um, training for many, many years, but at the same time, transmit that core with the benefit of their own experience and their knowledge. So I, I'm looking forward to hearing more about the successes of the individual candidates after the program has had its first run. How do, um, how do the candidates register and, and what are the minimum requirements for them to participate in the program? Okay, so the minimum requirement is to be a certified interpreter, legal or medical and also to have an experience. If they don't have a certification per se for a reason or another, if they have experience in the field, that's the requirement. We want to see their resume. We really want to see their credentials. And this is this is a, a train the trainer that's going to hold the name of the De La Mora Institute. So we want to re be really very careful to, to whom we're giving the name. So this is why we really ask them to um, give us their resume, uh, send us their certification, their credentials, and then we'll let them know if they've been accepted into this, uh, this program. Once they get the letter of acceptance and that they are registered for this program, we are going to go into um, the training first. It is going to be a, a core, if you want, the core requirement, which is 30 hours, that's not medical and that's not legal. The 30 hours, the first 30 hours is going to be purely adult learning, uh, cultural awareness, because we know that we are going to have any trainer is going to have a full diversity of audience that they are going to train. So we want to equip equipment, equip them with cultural awareness, cultural competency, and the difference in that. We want to also equip them, when, equip them, this word is full in my mouth, we will equip them with, um, with communication skills. Communication skills, 
we know the difference when we are talking you and me on this podcast now and the difference that when somebody is training someone and influence them to to move their action from this to that or a habit that they had or resistance to note taking for instance how are they going to influence their student later on that note taking is essential in interpreting that transparency in communication and intervening has specific rules so all this we can just tell them memorize this training and go ahead and give it because that would not really be train the trainer that would be us selling a training we're not doing that we're equipping the trainers they can take this 30 hours and after this 30 hours our bet is and what we want is to have better trainers in the field of interpreting in the United States. Once the interpreters have those 30 hours of training under their belt, tell me what the differences are between the legal and the medical track. So the medical, we are going to be uh, studying together how to prepare a bilingual interpreter uh, or bilingual person to become a, an interpreter or to start interpreting and then later on become a professional interpreter. The legal is the skill building. How do we practice in legal? What's the difference between, um, let's say, a court interpreter and the legal interpreter? And we know already these are totally two different disciplines, the medical and the legal, two different code of ethics, two different Sometimes we even feel two different personas. If you've done the medical and then the legal, you feel like you're a little bit uh, changing in your personas once you step into the hospital and the next day you step into the courtroom. So this is why these are totally two different classes. One is going to talk about the confidentiality, HIPAA, uh, working with uh, within the healthcare and how, you know, how wide the world of the uh, healthcare is. And the other one is going to be talking about purely legal matters and uh, interpreting within the court and with uh, lawyers or within the legal realm. So in addition to the 30 hours and the 15, more or less 15 hours per track that the candidate is going to receive, by the time they're done with the program, they're actually going to be able to teach interpreters themselves, for example, a 40 hour course that will qualify them to take an interpreting exam. Would that be fair? Yes, yes, that's, yeah. So after the, uh, let's say Maria, you come as a student and you take the train the trainer. After that train the trainer, you can start working as training the 40 hours medical requirement for the national certification in the medical field. And if you take the uh, 15 hours as well, the skill building for legal interpreting, you can start uh, training interpreters who are preparing for their uh, certification. Really, the whole idea is that our trainers that are going to have the name of, I am a trainer licensed with the De La Mora Institute, are going to be creative themselves. They're going to have their own business. They're going to create their own uh, career in that field. However, they're going to also be under the umbrella of the De La Mora Institute. We're not going to really let them go, meaning, we're going to always support them. We will create a community for them whenever they have a student that is, let's say, preparing for a test or preparing. We don't want them to lose that student. We will help them to prepare for the test, to create maybe new materials for them. And they will have a platform that they will always come and be fed, if you want. Will those new trainers be able to use the materials? Will they be provided materials that they can in turn use to teach their students? 
Yes, we are going, what we're going to uh, to have is they finish the 60 hours training, they graduate, that does not stop here. Then we're going to keep on creating more trainings for them and materials that they come and take from the platform that is for them to come and feed their uh, PowerPoints, their training, their presentations, whatever new project they are uh, going to, uh, to do in their careers as trainers, they can always come to the De La Mora Institute, to their platform and have more materials created for them, specifically for them. Now, this kind of training isn't cheap. Um, as we know, there's a lot of work that goes into creating the materials, the curriculum, and actually imparting the training. Will these new trainers have to pay a license fee every year, or how will they um, access the new material that's provided? So my part of the project, I'm going to be very candid. My part of the project here is purely academia and uh, presentation. Uh, this question, I would definitely ask it for the info at uh, De La Mora Institute. And uh, this way they can answer them and not give them a, a not, so, not sure answer. Could you provide a little bit of detail regarding the schedule for the training, including dates, time, what kind of format it will be? The first, uh, the legal and the medical track, the first track that I'm going to call the, the core track is going to be uh, from April 2nd. That's when we start every Tuesday and Thursday from 8.30 in the evening until 10.30 in the evening Eastern time. So uh, Pacific time, that would be 5.30 to 7.30. Then on Saturdays, it's going to be 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern time. Pacific time, that's going to be 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. We start on April 2nd, and then we keep on going until April 27, or with, with this, the core program. We, we then right away, we start with the medical track. And the medical track will be from April 30 until May 11. Again, Tuesday, Thursday, eight to uh, eight and a half until 10 and a half in the evening. And then on Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then we're going to take a break uh, in between the medical and the legal. And the legal is going to be from May 21st until June 1st, same time. Tuesday, Thursday for two hours in the evening, and then Saturday for four hours in the morning. Now, during all of these hours, will the interpreters who are training to become trainers have an opportunity to put into practice some of the training skills that they are being that they are learning and essentially maybe even teach other interpreters or other other candidates? every class they will have the opportunity to actually do the training or do some training themselves for all of us because that's the only way we learn we're adult so we need to we need we we want them to get their hands dirty in the kitchen before uh they start serving other people now we did an episode here on the podcast a couple of um of months ago, maybe, in which we interviewed my study group, the study group that I um, have been working with for several years. And, you know, to that point that you've just said that we as adults, we learn by teaching. Um, this might also be a really great opportunity for interpreters who maybe don't want to teach large groups, but maybe they want to run their own study group. They want to, you know, maintain their skills, but they want to maintain their skills and those of others that they're working with on in a more, let's say, you know, organized um, or, or or planned fashion. What do you, what, what do you say to some of those interpreters who may be thinking, well, you know what? I really want to learn these things because I learn better when I'm really understanding the nuts and bolts of things. But 
um, maybe I just want to use this for, you know, my own purposes or my own study groups or. Well, we know very well. I don't know if you know Stephen Covey, if you heard of the of the author uh, Stephen Covey. I, I really uh, like him uh, a lot. And one of his methodology to learn is to always teach. Any lesson that you feel is difficult for you, teach it, and then you are going to learn it. And, and any interpreter who would like to have a study group, who would like to uh, coach others, train others, not on a training uh, uh, scale that is, you know, having a class of 60 people or together or 100 or big presentations, but more of brainstorming, working together. Uh, how do we learn as interpreters our skills? Our skill as interpreters is a learned, acquired skill. It is not only by talent, and our talent is not enough. It is needed, but it's not enough. We need to go deeper into how are we going to sharpen the skills and sharpen the saw of an interpreter before we start really interpreting or just so we can become better interpreters and not get to a plateau where that's it, we can't do better than that. Now, it sounds to me like this is a labor of love for you, Elian. Um, You will be teaching by yourself or will someone else be teaching the, train, the trainer course with you? Of course, I won't teach. I won't teach it by myself and I won't accept teaching it without Augustine de la Mora. He is going to be with us, not in every classroom, but he is going to be uh, uh, an instructor and I'm going to be, uh, you know, next to him. And I have the pleasure and the honor to be next to him teaching this class. It is, it is a lot of, it's a big gift for me, this class. It's something that I always prayed for I always want it to happen. And for Augustine to give me this opportunity, it's a great pleasure for me to give back to the profession that really gave me a lot. Now, you mentioned that you had um, orchestrated the curriculum um, that is going to be taught in the um, Train the Trainers course. Why did you want to do this? Because this is something that we really miss. This is something that does not exist in the United States. This is something that does not exist in the United States. And I want to say it out loud to the world. We are doing something new. It is not any train the trainer. This is a train the trainer that all trainers are in big need for. Even the in trainers who've been already training for so long, I really invite them to come and take this class because we are giving this, um, if you want, we're giving we, what we researched and what we are going to offer is what really is needed in the market and needed in the United States for interpreters. How are we going to train all those bilingual who want to become interpreters? just by doing the cookie cutters and sending them the same training and we all have the same no that's not how it how we as adults are supposed to learn we're supposed to learn by being in connection with the other person who is teaching us now what is the the mission and the vision of the de la mora institute of interpretation in how it aligns with this train the trainer workshop? So uh, the De La Mora Institute just celebrated the 25 years last year, 2023. 25 years of working in this field, 25 years of empowering other interpreters, helping interpreters to get certified and uh, really, um, helping them grow in their career. This is going to be um, another gift 
two interpreters from Augustine de la Mora that is going to be, um, he's, he's technically sharing what he's been doing for 25 years and it's been successful. Nobody can argue that it hasn't been successful. It's been very successful. Many people all around, not only the United States, but all around the world already know Augustine de la Mora and what he has done for uh, the interpreting field. So this is his gift to, to uh, interpreters. Will it be possible for the candidates to either request a payment plan or choose one track and then perhaps add a second track? Uh, yes, they can choose one track and not take the other one because let's say uh, they're working in legal and they're not interested in medical or vice versa. Uh, yes, they can, they can do that. Uh, the payment plan, of course, they can call um, uh, De La Mora Institute or email info at De La Mora, uh, Institute com and uh, they give them the payment plan. Uh, and I really invite them to think about it as an investment in their uh, career and their growth. When all is said and done and you you finally make this dream of yours come true, what do you hope that the candidates take away with them from the program? I really would like them to um, see the value in it. What our mission is to add value to those interpreters and those candidates. And really by um, giving, uh, I think that would be the biggest uh, gift for us, for Augustine, for the De La Mora Institute, for all of us who are working behind the scenes. Because remember, we have we have a crew behind the scene who are great, great team who is uh, very passionate about uh, the De La Mora Institute and about the quality of education that we would like to 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 give and to keep on giving the whole uh, the whole time. So after we finish the first round, we are going to be celebrating. We are going to be opening the new community of interpreters, uh, trainers. We're going to, um, it's, it's, it's a celebration because we are growing our family. It's, you're seeing your family growing. What is there more beautiful than that? And it's a very beautiful, positive family where everybody is looking after uh, the other and everybody is uh, holding the other and helping them grow. I don't know that I could put it in better words. Elian, Sphir Marcus, thank you so much for taking the opportunity to share this important learning and growth project, which will bring so much, hopefully so much prosperity to interpreters in our field. Thank you so much, Maria, and thank you for having us and looking forward to uh, to everyone to join us April 2nd uh, for the first Train the Trainer of the De La Mora Institute. And of course, if you would like some more information, you should just um, visit the De La Mora Institute of Interpretation website, and you could also email info at delamorainstitute.com. Remember that the best way to learn and polish your skills is by sharing your knowledge with others. To our viewers and listeners, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Subject to Interpretation. Please visit the De La Mora Institute of Interpretation at delamorainstitute.com and sign up for the Train the Trainer course, which begins on April 2nd. Also, you can request to sign up with our to our newsletter, which you will get on a weekly basis. We would also love to receive your comments here on subject to interpretation at podcast at delamorainstitute.com. Thank you for joining us and never stop learning. Mm -hmm.